on my shit like Lamar. Like I'm the boss. Straight up the Clover G boss, you see it. Five, it's five underbosses. It's 50 niggas with Foley Clover chains in America. Looking at a nigga who done took a bullet and wised up and learned how you treat motherfuckers. Houston rapper Wesley Weston, a.k.a. Lil Flip, was shot Wednesday morning, March the 27th of 2002, in Houston, Texas. According to actual sources, Flip was returning home from a recording studio when a gold car pulled alongside and fired shots into a rental car Flip was driving. Flip was treated for a gunshot wound to the side and released from Ben Top Hospital that Thursday. No arrests were ever made. These are the detailed events of what took place before, during, and after the attempted murder of Lil Flip. Wesley Eric Weston Jr., born March 3rd of 1981, is son of Big West and hails from Cloverland. At a very young age, Flip was anointed the Freestyle King by none other than DJ Screw himself. Coming up, Flip sang in church as well as playing the drums and piano. No stranger to moving around, Flip traveled with his aunts and uncles doing talent shows and family reunions. Amid the flourishing underground rap scene of Houston, Lil Flip quickly rose to fame after his independently released 2000 album, The Leprechaun on Hump's Sucker Free Records broke through a national audience, prompting Flip to eventually sign with the majors. In 2002, Flip released Underground Legend later in the year, driven by the lead single The Way We Ball, as well as a remix of I Can Do That, a hit previously released on the Leprechaun album. The remix would feature Juvenile of Cash Money Records. This would extend Flip's audience nationally and heralded him as one of the South's most promising young rappers of the early 2000s. Two years later, Flip returned to the scene with the more expansive double disc you gotta feel me. The double CD spawned the hits Game Over and Sunshine, bringing Flip the national fame he had long been waiting for. With Flip's newfound success came competition. That competition would come in the form of T.I. Clifford Harris, which would lead to an incident in the streets of Houston. This, however, wouldn't be Flip's only time getting into a beef that would spill over to the streets. It's the early 2000s. The murder rate in the city of Houston is on the rise. Homicide numbers in Houston are skyrocketing. Channel 2 investigates discovering that Houston is second only to Chicago among the nation's six largest cities for murder increases year to date. I'm in Houston. The numbers are alarming, especially for the crime of murder. The number of homicides in the city of Houston are up for a second year in a row. Houston's homicide rate is up compared to last year. Rising homicides in the city of Houston, KPRC2 Investigates has been tracking the growing number of cases for the past year, and that number could top 500. Families of victims worried their cases will go unsolved, and detectives are forced to take on new cases each and every day. In 2002, the Harris County Sheriff's Department reported 81 homicides early in the year, which was up from 47 in 2001 at the same time period. This would be the largest increase in more than a decade, which reversed Harris County's general trend downward during those years. Houston police officials reported 257 homicides by the end of 2002. It was no secret that dudes were putting the murder game down in Houston, which brings us to the attempted murder of Lil Flip. After leaving a concert, Flip and his crew decided they wanted to go to MJ studio to put in some work. We was at the MJ studio. I think we had just came in from a concert and the guys wanted to go to MJ's. After having already been in the studio for at least two or three hours, Hump hit Flip up on the phone to see what was going on. By the time Flip and got there, I was passed, I was passed. I'm just calling to check on the guys. After receiving word from Flip that they had not yet recorded anything, Hump would proceed to call MJ, the owner of the studio, who was mourning the death of his father. And uh, Flip was like, man, we ain't recorded nothing yet. Man, you haven't been there two, three hours. I said, yeah, he said, well, MJ, he said, well, no, he, he in that sleep, bro. 
to sleep. So I told Flip to said, let me call him. So when I called him, man, I didn't know his father had just passed. And he was like, no, man, you know, I just come back from New Zealand, huh? man, my father just passed. A few more hours would pass before Hump would decide to drive up to the studio to check on Flip and his crew. So, to make a long story short, later on I went up there to the studio to check on him. True enough, MJ and them working, flipping them in the studio, everything, man. And, uh, Hump ultimately made it to the studio without fail to check things out. I tell the guy, well, look, man, I'm gone. Y'all good, everybody good. So, yeah. As Hump was driving back to the crib, dudes in another car pulled alongside of his vehicle and proceeded to stare inside as if they were looking for someone. So I had one of my, I had my bus driver with me, a good one of my good partners too at the neighborhood. And uh, man, we had just left. And, uh, and one of my other partners had followed us up there and uh, we was in two separate cars. So my partner, I'm getting ready to make a left on Cullen, my partner that's behind me, he called my phone. He said, uh, oh. I said, yeah, he said, man, you see them boys looking all in your car? The car was next to us, right? And I seen them, I seen them looking and looking and kept peeping, trying to see who in there. And I said, yeah, I see him. He said, man, I don't know what they're looking for. I said, me either, bro. Hump, who was strapped at the time, wasn't worried at all, promising to shoot the doors off the other car if anyone made a move. Right now, I ain't worried about it. I'm going to shoot the whole door off the car. <laughs> I said, I wish they would, man. He said, uh, he said yeah, just, we just going to watch it. At the time Hump made it to the crib, he received a call from Flip, telling him that he had been shot. We ended up leaving, man. And by the time I made it home, I think I had about a 15-minute drive, man, to get home. I get a phone call from, from Flip, man. You know, we, Telling me, man, they shot me, Hump, they shot me. Visibly nervous and shaken, Flip pleaded with Hump not to let him die. Please, man, don't let me die, man. Please don't let me die. And this just messed my head up. It's like, the bro, wait a minute, what are you saying? He said, I just man, seen you, what you get? Yeah, yeah, I just seen you. Say, Hump, they shot me, man. He said, man, they shooting at me. Being from the streets himself, Hump will calm Flip down and send his partners to scoop Flip up, rushing him to the hospital. Rumors would begin to flood the streets. Two of those rumors were that Flip was messing with some dude's girl. Obviously, the dude was a street nigga that didn't take lightly to Flip messing around with his girl. The other rumor was that Flip did a song in which he stole a dude's lyrics, putting them on his album without acknowledging or paying the dude. Well, you know, you hear, you hear two or three different stories about it, man. You know, you, I mean, you, you hear about dude and some girl then you hear about uh, somebody did the song with Flip and Flip used some of the man lyrics on our album you just hear multiple stories of it you know what I mean but at that same time we we never got to the bottom of uh, who did it you know it finally kind of kind of surfaced a little bit you know after me and Flip broke up you know I, I started hearing a little something about it you know but, you know, at that time, you know, that was, that was then. Flip, however, would survive this shooting. The Houston Chronicle covered the shooting. The article will read as such. Wesley Lil Flip Weston was shot Wednesday morning in Houston, Texas. Flip was returning home from a recording studio when a gold car pulled alongside and fired shots into his rental car. Flip was treated for a gunshot wound to the side and released from Ben Top Hospital that Thursday. No arrests have ever been made. Flip had recently just signed what loud slash only records and was preparing for his major label debut. You looking at a nigga who done took a bullet and wised up and learned how you treat motherfuckers. And you looking at a nigga who never took a bullet, been to jail, didn't learn how to treat motherfuckers from keep going to jail and still go be ignorant. You get older, you mature, man. And I'm trying to sell records and enjoy my money, be around, not be looking for niggas trying to do this and all that. 
From shootings to robberies in high-end shopping spots, we are taking a look at violent crime in which neighborhoods are seeing the biggest increase. KH11 Investigates is crunching the numbers and found surprising results. Here's Grace White. Take a drive around Houston from neighborhood to neighborhood and you can't always tell where violent crime is on the rise. You have to look here. KHU 11 investigates crunch the numbers to find out where violence is intensifying, looking at Houston zip codes with at least 50 violent crimes. Here's the three that increased the most since 2019. Number three, 77075, just south of Hobby Airport. Violent crime up there, 58%. In that area, there are a lot of apartment complexes, and we found a number of murders, robberies, and assaults in this zip code happening there. We have an apartment enforcement unit, so we're not, it's not just the criminal aspect of it, but it's quality of life issues. Belinda Knoll is an assistant chief for Houston Police. She's over the Criminal Investigation Command and says they're also looking at their own data, moving assets based on increasing crime. Different areas within the city have, have specific issues, population density, prevalence for gang crime. The commanders of those areas are always looking at what issues they may be having, what resources they need. Number two, 77019. It stretches from River Oaks to near downtown along Buffalo Bayou Park. Violent crime in this zip code up 65%. Along Allen Parkway, a, a lot of people park their vehicles to go run. You know, criminals are gonna go where they know they can basically get the biggest bang for their buck. And the number one zip code, 77027 including River Oaks District and Highland Village. It's up 109% since 2019. You're almost afraid to go into the shopping centers again. Shopping centers that have become targets for thieves, going after high-end watches, purses, and cars. I mean, they're, they know what they're doing. The spot with the most activity? The CVS on Westheimer in 610. The same shopping center where New Orleans police detective Everett Briscoe and his friend DJ Ricolfi were murdered. HPD arrested two men for those murders. They tend to follow them home. And then weeks home. later in a press conference announced two dozen arrests. Suspects accused of running a crime ring in the Galleria area. Are you convinced that you shut down that ring? I know we made a lot of uh, good arrests in that. What's your message to Houstonians who look at the headlines and think we live in a, a violent city? I would say there are still really good people in, in the city. and just to recognize that they are part of the equation and, and the Houston Police Department can't do everything by ourselves. Um, we need our citizens, we need our communities to be involved. When we looked at the numbers, there was a downward trend. Violent crime across the city is down 5% from last year, but it's still higher than it was pre-pandemic. Grace White, KHOU 11 News.